October 3rd, 2022. Half cast 356, episode 356. Let's go. Of course, I have a few things to share with you guys. An evening of reflection. Shall we? Girl 12 who shot her dad and herself in murder plot has died. This reminds me of the case from back in 2014 where the two girls, both 12 years old from Waukesha, Wisconsin, made a plot to stab one of their friends in order to appease a fictional internet character called Slender Man. The 12-year-old Texas girl who allegedly shot her father before turning the gun on herself as part of a murder plot has died. The young girl had reportedly concocted a plan along with another 12-year-old girl to kill their families and pets on September 20th. This would be an especially gruesome plan for anyone of any age, but for 12-year-old girls to think of something of this nature, I would be looking for any external influences or external impressions. While trying to carry out the plot, police found the girl lying in the street with a gunshot wound to the head and a handgun underneath her. Authorities then found the girl's 38-year-old father inside the family home with a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Both the girl and her father were airlifted to an area hospital late that night. The father was recently released from the hospital and expected to make a full recovery. Just a mixed bag of emotions going from confusion to shock to disbelief that your child would actually make an attempt on your life, moving on to extreme grief and sadness for losing your child in such a horrible, unforeseen manner. His daughter was declared dead two days after. The manner of death was ruled a suicide by a gunshot wound to the head, the Tarrant County Medical Examiner's Office said. The young girl, who was from Weatherford, Texas, had schemed the murder plot with another 12-year-old girl who lived in Lufkin, about 230 miles southeast. It's unclear how the girls knew each other and what caused them to concoct the plan. It's not unlikely for two girls of the same age to make a connection over the internet. What I would be looking for is any group chats or forums or threads where they were housing this type of discussion that would make them want to entertain carrying something like this out. Parker County Sheriff's Office said the juvenile suspect had planned for several weeks to murder her family and pets and had been in contact with another juvenile female from Lufkin, Texas regarding the murder plot. The other juvenile female had also planned to murder her father, but did not go through with the plan. The second girl who investigators believe was involved in the planning of the shooting was taken into custody last week. She has been charged with conspiracy to commit murder. The Parker County Sheriff's Office said in a Facebook post, it sounds like the plot was taken more seriously by one girl than it was by the other. The girl who actually tried to carry out the plan was supposed to drive and pick up the second girl as part of the murder plot. The two girls were planning on running away together to Georgia after carrying out their scheme. Parker County Sheriff Russ Arthur said the investigation is ongoing due to the injuries, the age of the juveniles, and the sensitive case matter. Information released regarding this case will be limited, Sheriff Arthur said. Next up, Massachusetts man charged with mom's murder, chokes on wet toilet paper, dies in custody. Looks like somebody didn't have time for the subtleties. <laughs> Not the accidental hanging, the accidental slip and fall in the shower, or the go-to move, the accidental overdose. They stuffed them like a jailhouse turkey. A Massachusetts man charged with murdering his mom, then setting her body on fire, in front of her Cape Cod home, choked to death on wet toilet paper in his jail cell over the weekend, authorities said. Adam Howe, 34, was rushed to St. Luke's Hospital in New Bedford, where he was pronounced dead on Sunday, according to a statement from spokesman Jonathan Darling of the Bristol County Sheriff's Office. Mr. Howe clogged his airways with wet toilet paper and suffered a medical emergency, the statement said. He clogged his airways? That's what he did to himself? Right. Out of respect for the family, we have no additional comment or detail. That family has been through a lot this weekend. 
please keep them in your prayers. Police and the fire department found 69-year-old Susan Howe's remains still ablaze on her front lawn Friday at 9.30 on the Tony Vacation Island known best for lobster rolls and sandy beaches. They have responded to a request for a wellness check and reports of a fire, according to Cape and Island's District Attorney Michael O'Keefe and Truro Police Chief Jamie Calise. After Adam Howe barricaded himself inside the home, the Cape Cod Regional SWAT team forcibly extracted him and placed him under arrest, authorities said. He was taken to Cape Cod Hospital for a psychiatric evaluation and medical officials cleared him to return to custody's authority said that right there tells me that he knew exactly what he was doing when he was doing it he was transported on saturday afternoon to ash street jail where supervisors put him on security watch and did a visual check every 15 minutes according to darley sounds like somebody's trying to cover their ass adam howe was also clothed in a nylon rip resistant smock for his safety despite the precautions he obstructed his airways with wet toilet paper. Adam Howe had been living with his mother, officials said. Next up, romance scammer gets 25 years in prison for money laundering. Take this from someone who doesn't even like you. They don't love you. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> sort of. A Georgia man found guilty of laundering millions of dollars accrued by online fraud, including scamming vulnerable people on dating websites, was sentenced Monday to 25 years in prison. Plenty of time for him to eat a toilet paper sandwich like the last guy. Elvis Egosa Okik Palor, there is absolutely nothing romantic about that name. He could not have been using that name. <laughs> was convicted earlier this year of one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering and 15 counts of substantive money laundering. 13 victims of romance fraud testified at his federal trial. <laughs> it was him, the man that stole my heart. One of them said she was convinced to send nearly $70,000 to a scammer she met on eHarmony. If you find love online and the first thing somebody does way before they even ask to see you in person is ask you for money, contact the authorities. The only thing worse than a broken heart is a broken bank account. Oh, geek Palor, please call me Elvis. <laughs> That's the only way he's going to get anywhere with that name. And his co-conspirators were part of a broader international network of online fraudsters and money launderers who wreak havoc and devastation on unsuspecting individuals and businesses said Ryan Buchanan, the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Georgia, Ogeek Palor directed money mules to open at least 50 fraudulent business bank accounts, I'm calling them Elvis from now on, that receive more than $9.5 million from various online frauds from October 2018 to August 2020, according to a statement from Buchanan's office. Social engineering, these people wanted to believe it was real so bad, they were willing to sink every last dollar they had to make it true. Elvis then laundered the money using other accounts, including dozens overseas, the statement said. Some of the money came from romance scams. Fraudsters created fake online dating profiles and targeted vulnerable individuals who had significant financial assets, such as retired widows or widowers, Multiple victims, mainly women, testified that they had met strangers online and were convinced over the course of months that they were in romantic relationships the long con, despite never meeting the men in person. Often the scammers claim they wanted to start a life with their victims. Why would I spend my life tied to you when I could just spend my life with your money? But that it couldn't happen until an issue was resolved that required a large amount of cash. U.S. District Judge William Ray II in Atlanta sentenced Elvis 46 to 25 years in prison and three years of supervised release. A hearing to determine the amount of restitution that O'Keefe Palor must pay will be scheduled for a later date. Fun show, fun show, fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this one up. 
but I'll be sure to talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.